Today's reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand in an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Um, <clears throat> if you look in your red book, uh, the Psalms are in your red book. So if you want to turn to Psalm 81, I'll sing one verse, and then if you would sing the next, that would be great back and forth it doesn't really have a a page number it's yeah, just Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound the temple, the merry harp and the lark. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon and at the full moon the day of our for this is a statute of Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. God laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph going out over the land of Egypt, where I heard a voice I did not know. I eased your shoulder from the were set free from the great diggers basket. You called upon me in trouble and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Merib. For all my people and I will admonish you Israel, if you would but listen to me, there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth. Oh, come on up and join me on the floor. If we have any here, I'm going to do a lesson with all of y'all. All right, then I'm going to sit. Oh, come on up. Come on up. You're good. We're going to play a game today. Come play a game with me. Have y'all ever played the game Simon Says before? Yeah? Cool. Have a seat here with me. So, we just sang a psalm, and the psalm ended um, by saying, open your mouth wide. So, Simon says, open your mouth wide. Good job. It also said at the beginning, sing with joy. So, Simon says, 
sing with your voice. Ah, very good. Simon says, stand up. In a little bit, we're going to sing a song called Lord of the Dance. So Simon says, dance. Very good. Awesome. Have a seat. Ah, Simon didn't say have a seat. We're all out or we're all in, we could say. We just heard a story about a thing called the Sabbath. Can you say Sabbath? Sabbath. Sabbath means a day of rest. So if I were to say, Simon says rest, what would you do? How would you rest? What does it look like to rest? Oh, perfect. So Simon says rest. I snore. Simon says wake up. A day of rest. Another reason that we celebrate the Sabbath is a day to pause or to rest and to remember that God is with us, that Jesus is with us and is always with us. We're going to hear a story in just a little bit from Pastor Dave about how Jesus showed up on the Sabbath with his disciples who were hungry, and he showed up with a guy who was sick and had a, a hand that was hurt, and how Jesus healed his hand. And so when we gather here on Sundays, we gather to rest. Maybe sometimes we close our eyes if me or Pastor Dave talk too long. But we also gather here to remember through our prayers and through our songs and through the meal of communion and through hearing uh, a sermon, we gather to remember that God is with us always. I have this picture here. Last week, if you were here, they talked about the Holy Trinity at church. Um, and this is a picture of the Trinity. I like to think this is kind of like God's dinner table. Do you eat dinner at a table with your family? Yeah? Is there a seat for everybody at that table? Yeah? That's kind of what this picture is a picture of, at least to me. It's a picture of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and they're sitting at a dinner table. And there's a spot for you and me and everybody in the world to join at that table as well, to be with God and to be with Jesus and to know that God is always with us. So when you gather around your table with your family to eat later on, I want you to remember, maybe say a prayer to God and saying, thank you, God, for Sabbath. Thank you, God, for rest. And thank you, God, that you are with us always. So repeat after me a prayer. Dear God, Thank you that you are with us. Thank you for Sabbath. Thank you for rest. Help us to share, help us to share your love, your love with each other every day. Amen. 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 Very good. Thank you all so much for coming up. Go enjoy a day of rest. You can go back to your seats. Turn to the Gospel of Mark for most of the next six months or so after being out of Mark for most of Lent and Easter. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the second and third chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as he and his disciples made their way through the grain fields, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? 
And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. And then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, Jesus entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that, he might, so that they might accuse Jesus. And Jesus said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then Jesus said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? They were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart. And then Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against Jesus. How to destroy him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. It was not intentional that we didn't have screens today. It just, I guess, has worked out that way. We did, a, we did slide uh, pictures and presentations and so forth, but they're not on the screen. And since we're already practiced at trying to find pages, including a psalm in this red book, I invite you to turn to the back of the red book to Martin Luther's Small Catechism, page 1160, 1160 or 1160, to Martin Luther's Small Catechism, a quick catechesis review here. And as you turn, here's a little bit of musical interlude based on the Ten Commandments. You shall have no gods before me. Do not take God's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor mom and dad the same. And it keeps on going through the Ten Commandments. Real short, real sweet, right? You can put that up anywhere. You can put that right there in your mind, a tune hyper it all, right? Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. You shall have no gods before me, says God. Do not take the Lord's name in vain, says God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy says God, and honor mom and dad the same. And like I said, the next six are easily stuck into, uh, or the next five are easily stuck into those lines. So on page 1160, let's take a look at what Martin Luther says about the fourth, about the third, I'm sorry, the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Read aloud with me just under the italicized print, what is this, or bosses das, or what does this mean? Let us read together. We are to fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching or God's word, but instead keep that word holy and gladly hear and learn it. Thank you. Our catechis catechesis for the day. Yeah, we are to fear and love God, first of all, because God is a jealous God and God loves us like a, a wonderful parent, like a big mama bear, father bear loving that bear cub, like a hen gathers her brood under her wings, those kind of things, God's love. And I say that at the beginning of uh, this sermon time because, hey, Martin Luther said something, we should not despise the sermon, the preaching, right? So don't despise this. Um, but ultimately, it was just a reminder about being in God's Word, especially on the Sabbath. And for us Christians, we worship on the first day of the week, not because it's the Sabbath, but because Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the first day of the week. But we've made it into our Sabbath. So the first day of the week, and that's why we, we gather and we worship this day and we hear God's word. But Martin Luther then would say, but it's just, it's more than that. And the large catechism and the small catechism goes on to say that it's more than just hearing God's word. It's also eventually being doers of God's word. But first of all, allowing God's word to free you as it freed Martin Luther, as he wrestled with his own sins and wrestled with his own guilt and wrestled with his own stuff in life eventually he discovered god's free in grace and he changed his name as i've said multiple times from luther to luther because right in the middle of the luther the th is theta stands for god and eleutheria the greek word means free that he was freed in god freed in christ because of what jesus had done for him and so he changes his name because he wants to say something about being free which goes back to the sabbath about being free because when Debbie began that reading 
she said, observe the Sabbath, but eventually in Deuteronomy it says, remember, you were slaves, you were not free people until I freed you, and then I freed you to be free people. And in free people, you don't have to work seven days a week like you did as slaves. You can now just work six days a week and do like God does on that seventh day rest. But in our lives of, of sin and, and trying to make rules of things and trying to put boundaries on things, we, in Jesus' day and before Jesus' day and after Jesus' day, people have come up with rules and laws of how to keep the Sabbath day holy, what you can do and what you can't do. Whether it be Laura Ingalls Wilder in Little House on the Prairie and telling the story of her pa and her, and her great-grandfather making rules for her, her dad and his brother. Among other things, you couldn't do anything on the Sabbath. They couldn't even go out and sled in their new sled, their new sleigh that they had just built. It was on the Sabbath and they couldn't go sled. And here was this great, brilliant, beautiful snow up in the beautiful place of Minnesota. And they couldn't go sled. But boys will be boys, and these sons snuck out and jumped on their sled, jumped on that sleigh, and they started going down that little hill in Minnesota behind the house, and they grew up on a farm. And there's this pig that is kind of escapes and starts chasing him. The next thing you know, the pig collides with the sled and with them, and the pig is squealing and yelling on the sled. And, of course, their father hears this. They come back in the house after riding their sled on the Sabbath. They weren't supposed to. And Laura tells the story that her pa told her about how difficult it used to be for her grandfather to keep the Sabbath. And he got in trouble for riding on a sled with a squealing pig. And when his dad and his brother walked into the house with their heads down, their father didn't say anything to him. He sat there reading the Bible because that's what you're supposed to do on the Sabbath. And after the Sabbath ended, he went to them in their room and gave them a whooping, says Laura Ingalls Wilder and said, don't you dare ride your sled again on the Sabbath. Eventually, though, she tells the story of how her granddad had to ride a sled on the Sabbath to help get her dad, her pa, and ma, or how to get her, the grandparents were, had to get, basically, pa, <laughs> not her ma, had to get pa to the hospital to be born on the Sabbath. Health care doesn't stop on the Sabbath. You got to figure out other days and times to keep Sabbath. I worked yesterday. It was Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Sabbath, S A B B A T H, stands for seven or seven Sabbath. I worked yesterday on the Sabbath. We had a funeral here at St. Mark's. Caroline Tyree worked playing the organ and the piano beautifully. Uh, we had people who worked next door preparing food and serving food to the family of Edgar Mueller as we remembered his wife, Nicole. She had died in January, but it had been set up for that Sabbath day, June 1st, a while back, because of all the people coming from various places, states and nations, coming for the funeral yesterday. Sometimes we have to work on the Sabbath, and so we had to figure out times and places of where we practice our Sabbath. And as we move into summertime, I pray that you find out good times and places to practice your Sabbath, whether it be at the beach or the mountains or vacation time or out of school time. Where were you? spend some time practicing Sabbath? Where will you spend some time reading God's Word and praying? Maybe not doing something or maybe doing something. Both can be part of Sabbath keeping, right? Perhaps it's uh, out there on the baseball field for you baseball aficionados, and especially as you're watching uh, Little League or some of the child sports, the kids sports going on, and you think about the little, the little boy catcher going out to the little boy pitcher because the pitcher has all of a sudden gotten wild and trying to throw too much junk and, and the balls are going every which way and the little catcher walks out and puts his mask over his face because that's what he sees the catchers on TV do. And he says, remember, friend, remember, friend, it's just you and me playing catch. Maybe Sabbath is like that. It's just remember you and God playing catch. A prayer here, a prayer there. God's word, pondering, thinking, considering, laughing. Enjoying life. The psalm we prayed today a moment ago, we sang Psalm 81. It's a Sabbath psalm. Sing for joy and, and celebrate and remember and enjoy life. Jesus and the two stories that we heard are Sabbath stories, not the first Sabbath stories that occur in Mark. He, a Sabbath story occurs in chapter 1 where he heals someone. And in chapter 2, we got this hunger story. And then in chapter 3, a healing story. And by the end of those, the people are out to destroy Jesus. 
Jesus is trying to give life which is, and freedom, which is what the Sabbath was intended to do, to give life and freedom. But the people don't like what Jesus is doing, and they seek to destroy him, which eventually leads us to life and freedom because he was destroyed for our sins as he destroys our sinfulness and gives us his grace. First story about hunger, about his disciples being hungry, and they're plucking grains of, of wheat, plucking heads off of grains of wheat. And I can remember some of the people I've known being in church plucking their children, their grandchildren, if they're not behaving in church. <laughs> I didn't really hit Dave just then, but plucking. Plucking heads of grain, they're hungry. And all these grain stories, and, the, and then they're hungry. And so Jesus says, well, what's the law about feeding people who are hungry? When should you? When shouldn't you? You should always feed people who are hungry. There's uh, uh, the grain stories. I can imagine the people who were in Pharisees in this case, but they're sitting there watching Jesus and his disciples through binoculars or something, and they're going, what? Look what they're doing. They're serial killers. Grain, serial, C-E-R-E-A-L, serial. Or wait a minute, wait a minute, look, look, look. What did they do just then? They had a grain assault. Assaulting grain. Looking head, anyway, grain of salt. Um, and then probably one of them said, I hope they get a migraine at the end of that. Um, speaking of food and to try to connect it with Colin's mentioned a while ago, Colin and I and some of our community ministry, social ministry folks sitting back here in the back and other places met a few uh, weeks ago to talk about our budget concerns, about how we're not able to do as much for food for days or Feed NC or some of our other organizations that we do give some of our money to through St. Mark's. We're not able to do as much as we would like to do or have done in the past, but we continue to do that. If you take a look at today's back of the bulletin, all those announcements, the announcements, it mentions food for days and oatmeal and feeding children. Every single announcement, by the way, except for one, has to do with food. <laughs> Every single announcement on the back of that page has something to do with food except for one which is my Bible study on Wednesdays, which hopefully it helps feed people's souls, but we don't eat or drink during the Bible study. But all the rest of them have something to do with food. But food for days. There was a fourth grade girl. She, went sl she walked slowly with her head down. This is from the Food for Days website. A counselor noticed and did an assessment and got this little girl into the backpack meals program. After her first weekend with a backpack, every time the girl passed the counselor in the hallway, she would smile big and ask, do I get my backpack meal this Friday? It says, Food for Day's mission is to help real children in our local communities and to put food in their bellies and smiles on their faces. Jesus says it's good to help, help people to eat, to give to St. Mark's and or Food for Day's or through St. Mark's to Food for Day's. Pastor Burry mentioned the uh, ELCA National Youth Gathering coming up in a little over a month. They're having Generation Zero Hunger, where we, they, all of us in the ELCA are helping to collect uh, food and finances to help give to, uh, give at uh, the National Youth Gathering to help create zero hunger. I ate well this morning already, by the way. I'm not one of the seven million or so people who are hungry today here in our nation. I ate well because of Lutheran men in mission feeding me and doing well. Thank you, Curtis sitting right up here and, and others, Bill and, and Bill and others sitting around, Paul and Jimmy. Thank you very much for helping to feed me. I ate well today. But some of our money, in addition to our offering at Lutheran men in mission, um, some of our offerings also go to ELCA World Hunger, celebrating 50 years of being in mission. And last year, uh, worked in 66 different countries, worked in 34 states, not just with food, but also with Lutheran disaster relief. And so, again, some of your finances come this through St. Mark's and then they're given out to the bigger church and bigger church ministries, both locally and internationally and internationally through these resources like Food for Days and ELCA World Hunger. And then the other was, the other story that Jesus told on, or happened to Jesus on the Sabbath is when the people were there and, the, and they're worshiping and there's a man with a withered hand and they're all keeping Sabbath, including the man with a withered hand. And, Jesus sees him and says, come forward. It's the first altar call in the Bible. <laughs> and in a few moments, I'll give you an altar call. If you're Baptist, you go, yes, finally. <laughs> if you're not so much Baptist, uh-oh, what is that? And I hope I don't have to come to that. Well, it's an altar call that we do most Sundays when you're invited to come forward again and stretch out your withered hand 
or your withered faith or your withered soul or your withered wallet even and receive God's grace through the body and blood of Christ. You'll stretch out your hand and in it receive a bit of grain called the body of Christ. You'll then receive or dip or in tink, uh, into the chalice uh, that grain reminding you of Christ's blood, body and blood given and shed for us, for our salvation, for the forgiveness of our sins, for this free gift of grace that we can go and, and share God's love and grace with others financially and through food and through helping to heal in many and various ways. So there was a farmer, it was a grain farmer, and at the during, after he planted his crop, he'd walk around town and walk around the farm saying, I can barley wheat for my grain to come in. I can barley wheat. Those are grain analogies, by the way. Uh, I can barley wheat to see what will happen through us in these days and months and years ahead together in ministry uh, financially as well as, how, as well as as we continue to help feed hungry people as we continue to help in Christ's mission of healing with our outstretched hands to one another and the world. Amen. is Lord of the Dance and they it was supposed to be up on the screens so I bet you know dance dance wherever you may be I am the Lord of the Dance said he and I'll lead you on wherever you may be and I'll lead you on said the dance said he I don't have my music up here I gotta go get it um, oh fantastic yeah
and in faith with God we profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The peace of Christ be with you all. You may share Christ's peace with one another and then be seated. but new again. We're going to try passing offering plates and see what happens, see if we can figure that out. So we may need your help and pay attention to where they're coming from. Do we have some ushers passing plates? We're good. All right, well, let's continue. Let us pray. You may remain seated. Oh, Lord, our God, as we give thanks and praise to you for Sabbath and Sabbath days of rest. We give you thanks for your freeing grace that allows us to, uh, to wrestle with what to do and what not to do on Sabbath days. And we give thanks for this day to gather and worship as your church, your body of Christ, to hear again your scriptures and your preached word, to receive again the sacrament, and to be in company with one another, sharing your peace that passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This day, O oh Lord, we lift up all those with withered hands and withered hearts and withered wallets and withered homes due to storms and witheredness of, of life and faith, of body, soul, mind, and spirit in all sorts of different ways. We lift up your servants that are on our prayer list, including your servant Drew, who just had another hand surgery a few days ago. We lift up Barbara and Sarah and Mitch and Judd, Jim. All who are homebound and all who are caregivers, we lift up friends and family members from our own hearts as well as from our own outstretched hands. In this day, we extend our Christian love and sympathy to the family of Rachel Catalano, cousin of Peter Kiokolo. We extend our Christian love and sympathy to, to the family and friend, uh, Don Morgan's friend uh, at Mac's death. We lift up Mac's family and friends like Don and Diane and others as they grieve Mac's death. And we lift up the family of Wilma Scoggins, her husband Troy and Allison and Trey and all their family. Even as we are mindful of the promise of the resurrection to eternal life, we pray your peace that passes all understanding be upon them and upon Edgar Mueller and his family as they remembered his wife, Nicole, yesterday during the funeral service here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. These couple of prayers, as well as so many more petitions, lifted up from our hearts and our homes, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, the grain that was buried into the ground so that he may rise again to provide fullness of life for us all. Amen. We continue with a canticle of thanksgiving, page 219 and 220. Thank you. 
Eucharist as a meal of thanksgiving. And so we do give you thanks and praise of God, mindful that eventually those people did, who sought to destroy him, did destroy him, at least they thought, killing him, executing him on the cross before he was raised from the dead on the third day. And so we remember what happened on the night before. He took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all the drinks saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now for that altar call. <laughs> we'll invite you to come forward to receive Christ's body and blood as you so desire, coming down the center aisle and then returning to your seat by the side aisle, receiving the host and then dipping it into the chalice. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I mentioned a couple of those food for days and community ministry things and even the funeral meal here yesterday. And um, if you're interested in knowing more about serving during the week with any of these ministries, local ministries, or through St. Mark's with these, see me after worship today. Uh, Mike and Patty Schmid sitting back here. Um, Patty was here both for the funeral meal, but also they'll be at, probably at Feed and See again tomorrow uh, like normal or Shirley uh, Lachlan sitting up a bit closer and others, uh, Marilyn and Ron Boardman were here yesterday helping with a funeral meal. So whether it's a funeral meal or Feed and See or Christian Mission, Food for Days, yeah, let me know if you're interested in hearing more about those types of ministries or even about financial ministries. Contact me or, or Colin or Matt Miller. Let us pray. Oh, Lord of God, you indeed open wide your hand and satisfy the desires of all the living. You give us food in due season. We give you thanks for this food that we have received, this, this bit of the body and blood of Christ to strengthen us, to renew our withered hands and hearts, to send us forth this Sabbath weekend into a, the new ventures of this new week. Guard us and guide us, keep us, and may we be agents of your work through our hands and through our hearts. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you a favor and give you peace.